Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are checking out two more Star Trek The Next Generation episodes starting with season 3 episode 17 Sins of the Father and then we are heading into season 5 episode 19 The First Duty. I said in last week's video that these were going to be the last two episodes of Star Trek TNG on the channel before I hop into DS9 but that is actually not the case and stick around to the end of this video to learn more about a few more episodes of TNG that I will be watching. I chose Sins of the Father and The First Duty because they are episodes that relate to episodes that I have already watched on the channel and they are kind of precursor episodes to the ones that I'm watching. Sins of the Father relates to Worth and his father getting almost like excommunicated from Klingon honor and stuff like that and I'm pretty sure that The First Duty is both a Wesley Crusher episode which will be really interesting because I haven't really seen much of Wesley Crusher in my run of TNG but it is also sort of related to lower deck so that would be really interesting to watch as well both precursor episodes to ones that I have already watched and reacted to on the channel as you can see I am not in my dorm I am at home again which means no Star Trek shirt unfortunately but we do have my dog Huxley sitting on the bed fast asleep she's super excited for more Star Trek today and if you'd like to check out more of my reactions you can head over to my patreon of uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early thank you so much for checking out let's get back to the video okay so let's start out this video without further ado I hope you enjoy my reaction to season 3 episode 17 sins of the father first officer on board this ship if he should feel patronized in well, any I'm way sure we'd know one does not patronize a Klingon <laughs> so true the unusual orders the Klingons are very thorough I'm sure commander Kern has studied for his assignment just as commander I Kern do you think he likes kernels and popcorn <laughs> oh that was not funny I always enjoy the look of Klingons they kind of look like space swashbucklers with really ugly heads. I asked that I be allowed to take my station. Very well. You will accompany us to the bridge. Interesting. It's for us. You will address me as commander or sir at all times. <laughs> Wesley's like, I won't. <laughs> I am in command. It is my intention to bring a sense of discipline. Worf does not like this. Acting Ensign Wesley Crusher. Oh. No, sir. Commander, sir. Why not get mad at Dida as well, huh? This is so interesting. Shoot. Engaged. Increasing to one third impulse power, sir. I'd be so stressed under this guy's command. To explore strange new worlds. To seek out new life and new civilizations. That's a house. Mind if I join you? No, sir. Is there something wrong, Wes? Yeah, there is. Anything right for him. Every time I respond to an order, he jumps down my throat. I don't know what I'm doing. He reminds me of the ensign in Lower Decks, you know, the guy who thinks Riker doesn't like him. His style of command is just different. Klingons believe in obedience and a strict formality of command. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Except, except the one guy who wouldn't really mind it. Worf. Except for Worf, why? Why? Mark point 03, range 300,000 kilometers. Excellent. See, I know about the father being dragged in the mud in this episode, probably, right? So it's interesting why this guy's being nice to war. Is that what you are saying? It should not be needed, sir. Very good, Lieutenant. Why is he talking to him like a child? Okay, now this is a whole different punishment. He's not being cruel. He's being... He's talking to Worf like he's a preschooler, like he's a child with zero brain. I imagine it must be very difficult for you to work with a crew that is... I would be happy to guide you in that regard, if it would be helpful. Thanks, Riker. No, Commander. Never mind. If it were a Klingon ship, I would have killed you for offering your suggestion. Oh my god. Oh my days. I was told to prepare for that. I shall try some of your burned replicated bur burned replicated burned meat. <laughs> That's funny. Mr. Commander. Uh, try some caviar. Caviar and turkey? That's weird. This is for special occasions. Uh, I, I am honored, Captain. Ah, oh, yeah, he's not eating that. Sorry, this looks like the most random meal of all time. <laughs> I believe he was trying to communicate the crew's sense of discomfort with my style of... <laughs> Under normal circumstances, I would consider that a challenge. Sir, I think that's a flower. Sir, I think you're eating a flower. 
None taken. I never killed anyone at the supper table, Mr. LaForge. So if you're gonna insult him, insult him at the supper table. I'm sure this is well prepared. It is much too bland for the stomach of a clink. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny. Being at ease. It is not the ship of a warrior. It's not a warrior ship though, it's a ship of exploration. I find you to be a capable Starfleet officer. A credit to your ship. And why are you talking to me like a preschooler? Perhaps your blood has thinned in this environment. This is so interesting. I love this episode. So your blood is not so thin after all. Interesting. Demonstration can be arranged. That is the response of a Klingon. <laughs> this is what he wanted. My older brother. What? What? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on a second. A year old. When you left for the Kitterer outpost. Oh, my mind just exploded. I did not know about this at all. How did no one tell me this in the comments or anything? I had no living relatives. They assumed that I was killed with the family at Kitimer. He could be lying that he's his brother as well. You are the eldest son. The challenge is yours to make. The challenge? Klingon High Council has judged our father a traitor to the- Ah, uh, here it is, here it is. Okay, so he actually is his brother then. Why did- I can't believe no one spoiled it for me in the comments that he had a brother. I will hear the evidence when I arrive. The charge has been made by Duras, the son of my father's greatest rival. Yeah, I know that guy. And he is responsible for theirs. If I fail in my challenge, I will be executed. Executed? See, the thing is, we know that he fails. We know that he's dishonored. Captain should be at your side while you make your challenge. I'm sure you would do no less for me. That would inspire so much confidence. If I had Picard standing by my side, I would feel king of the world. First city of the Klingon Imperial Empire. Oh, look how happy this guy is. I ask you to stand with me, to be my Chadich. Okay, okay, Kern. Okay, Worf. Together, you will restore the family honor. My hope is that Kern is actually the brother. Because it would mean my death as well if you fail. Oh, wait. Klingons. That's genius. In council chambers, you are my Chadich. You do not insist. Oh, my God. Oh, Worf, that was cold, man. Who knew that this Klingon world was so green? I was expecting it to be like like this, like this, the whole the whole planet. Do you think Klingons wake up to this and they go, what a beautiful day? <laughs> do you think they do that? The lies that have been spoken of my father. He challenges. You prepared to answer for this if you fail? Yes, with my life. Why do you- We watched this guy die too, right? You claim a birthright you have forsaken. Well, I have not forsaken my heritage. I am Klingon. I love how they just talk in basic like statements and like yelling, almost shouting. I am here at my own request. I am Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Enterprise. Oh, he knows how to talk to Klingons. Trust of a commanding officer is admirable. Council has noted it. Yeah, that would be admirable for a Klingon. Now the truth has been revealed. The traitor Morg sent the defense access codes to the Romulan patrol. Nah, that was you, buddy. That was you. Your father was a traitor. Says the traitor. Okay, slap him back, Worf. Slap him back. You will not wear the emblems of our people. You can't even say this. The judgment hasn't been decided yet. Challenge can only result in a fool's death. It is a good day to die, Doris. <laughs> that was cool. It does not get over. Oh, that was cool. I would speak with you. Alone. Sounds good. And protect what we have. Now, if you leave before the magma, no shame will come. Oh, this guy's actually trying to protect Worf. Leave. No. Or you too will be condemned as a traitor. Wow, this is actually interesting. This guy actually trying to get him to leave. 
He must know that the evidence is pretty overwhelming for Warstad. Understood. I love this red light. Not error now by embracing it again, for you only embrace death. We shall see. Oh, no way he dies. Then you will die for him. Die for him? Maybe this is why we never see Kern again, because he dies right now. Oh, nice Kern. Go Kern. Oh. Oh, Kern, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, he's dead. I was wondering why we never see him again, especially after the episode where they resolve this issue. Fortunately, his metabolic recovery is phenomenal. He will be all right. He'll be all. That's good. During the attack, and we cannot be certain if the scan was complete. Looks like a pretty good matchup data. Yeah, but they were falsified. No, after the shields are dropped, they are no longer synchronous. Commander, somebody's been rewriting history. Yes, thanks, Jordy. I would like your permission to ask one of the crew. Oh. Who? Choose whomever you wish. Then I would ask you. Ah, okay, of course, of course. I can think of no one I would rather have at my side. Oh, interesting. Set for my chadich. By a coward. Oh, dude, you are a coward. Something Starfleet does not teach you. Picard can fight. You may test that assumption at your convenience. This episode is just cold line after cold line. Receiving a personal transmission from Mog seconds before the shields fell. Riker to Captain Picard. Yeah, but it's false. Only the son of Mog survived. Get back. Then we have a short recess. Then Mark. He is like, yeah, I needed to use the bathroom anyways. She's living in the old quarter. I'm going to find her. It is too dangerous. You must not go alone. Will I come with me? I'm your child, Ditch. See what I was saying? See what I'm saying? Cold line after cold line. I don't think I've ever seen the Klingon world outside of that room before. We were with Worf's father just before the attack on Kittum. No. Yeah, you were. Don't lie to me. Who was the traitor? I do not know. Then we have no way to prove Morg's innocence. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You must leave now, Chadish. I am dead. He's like a Klingon who, without honor, you know what I mean? It's also crazy that there's no locks on that door. He just entered her house. Okay, Picard, let's sh Oh. Oh, nice, buddy. That's an ugly Klingon, too. He's gonna be the old lady. Old lady, old lady. I caught his eye back then, but he was too fat. He was too fat. I will come. Yes, let's go. But this trial doesn't end very well, does it? So I'm very curious. Judgment of- Get back! Stop! Stop the trial! Presented in open council. She will die before she gives evidence. Be silent, Doris. Yeah, shut up, man. Obviously, we would not. Gillist, you can go now. What? You are still fat, Kim Peck. Dude, another cold line. Why did you judge my father guilty when you knew he was not? Yeah. Someone had to be blamed. You can't just do You can't just do that. That happens in real life, though. I've been transmitted, Gerard. Father, for us. Ha <laughs> there we go. If the truth were known, it would shatter the council. So you're throwing him under the bus for no reason. War's challenge is successful. The honor of his family must be restored. Yeah, yeah, you know, but he can't. His challenge was defeated before he ever made it. It was a rigged trial. What does this say of an empire? Who holds on us so dear? Yeah, you know what? So true. You will not execute a member of my crew, nor will I turn his brother over to you. Oh, Picard, man. I will die for the Empire. What? I will accept discommodation. Discommodation? It would be the same as admitting your father's guilt, Worf. 
Yeah, so he's not like a Klingon anymore, right? Will never be spoken of again. Until that episode that we watched. Or the son of a traitor. Oh, you deserve that. That was so satisfying. Wolf wants you to live. The name of your father must someday be cleared. Do we ever see Kern again? Because I've never seen him before. Wow, this is such a moment for Worf as a character. They're all turning away from him. Cling on no more. Music at the end, dude, I have chills. And that was my reaction to Sins of the Father, season three, episode 17 of Star Trek The Next Generation. And it's really good to have a perspective on the events of, I think it was a reunion. Don't at me, but I, th I mean, you can at me if I'm getting the episode wrong, but I think it's reunion. What's her name? Kalar, I think that's what her name is. She appears, she dies. We have Duras, we have that other guy with the weird bug eyes. You know that episode, this was a precursor to that episode and it was really nice to have the context now because now that episode, if I ever watch it again, will it'll mean a lot more. Like I'll understand just the heaviness and the weight that that episode has. This one had a lot of weight and the ending was so good. I got chills the way that they all Funny, first of all, Klingons, they're very, I feel like sometimes they almost think like children. They're like, okay, so if we're like excommunicating communicating this guy from being a Klingon, like if he's, if he's no longer a Klingon, then you know, that means we can't look at them anymore because they're not a Klingon, so we have to turn around. So then they all have to form a circle around him and turn around. I don't know, it's just kind of, it's just kind of funny, but it was also really dramatic. The way the camera is in the middle and it spins around and everyone's turning and like doing the salute thing and then turning around and then the brother had to do it. And you could tell how reluctant he is. He's like, he does it so aggressively and then he like turns around. That was really cool. But I also have a question about Kern. We never see him. Okay, well, though, no. we may see him. I have not seen him since. I've watched episodes from all seven seasons, and I have not seen him. I've never even heard of him. So seeing that Worf has a brother was mind-blowing, and somehow people didn't spoil it in the comments, which is crazy, because I feel like everything has been spoiled at some point in the comments for future episodes that I'm going to be watched, but Kern wasn't. I had no idea about him. I didn't know he existed. If they have talked about him in an episode that I've watched and I totally forgot or it went over my head or I thought it was like some other Klingon and not his brother. But yeah, even in, I'm going to just call it Reunion. Even in Reunion, the episode that I previ previously watched before Sins of the Father, he wasn't mentioned. And I thought it would be, I thought it would be interesting if he was mentioned or he should have been mentioned in the episode unless I min missed it because I mean, that's his life also. Like, he can now become part of Worf's life again. I thought that would, like, I thought that would be something that would happen. Maybe he appears in an episode I just haven't seen of TNG, or maybe he doesn't appear at all. But I thought that it was just really interesting that I didn't know that he had a brother. And Curran was really cool. I thought Curran was maybe going to betray Worf at some point or not be Worf's brother. But then as the episode went on, in my mind, I was like, a Klingon wouldn't usually lie because that would be dishonorable except for duras and everyone like basically all of klingon council is lying to save to keep the klingon council in place so there's not like a revolt or something because duras's family is so powerful which is so dishonorable by the way that's like a you know that slap that Worf gave duras at the end of the episode i wanted like a thousand more but that slap was really really nice anyways it was very satisfying and also you know i was just thinking that like Kern just seemed like a genuinely nice guy overall like a genuinely nice brother so i started to stop suspecting him especially when he started getting stabbed when he got stabbed i was like okay he's i think he's actually Worf's brother here but yeah this episode was just really good i love Clint on episodes and this episode did not disappoint. I love being on the Klingon homeworld and just being in that council chamber watching the Klingon 
cultures and watching the Klingon, like the ways of life, I guess, and just how they interact with each other. But this episode also went into the old town, which I've never been to before in Star Trek. And I feel like I've never been outside of that council chamber before in any episode that I've watched. So it was really interesting to go somewhere else. It felt almost like I was watching the episode Unification, which is that Romulan episode, which I reacted to with Spock. And it felt like that because in that in that episode we go into the into the into Romulus, and you know we actually go into the city and we talk to some people on the ground and we go through the streets and stuff. That's what going into the old town, whatever you want to call it, on this Klingon world was like, which was really fun. It was really cool, and yeah, it was also really sad and very dramatic at the end and I'm glad to know it was nice to know like while watching this episode that Worf figures it out eventually but watching the end it felt so hopeless and I felt so sad for Worf and it gave me chills and this was a really good episode and now we are going on to another episode which I am very excited for which is season 5 episode 19 the first duty enjoy it arrival Mr. Data we should be arriving at Earth in 10 hours, 16 minutes, sir. Sick, we're going to Earth. Brand. Hi, sir. Do you know Admiral Brand? We've met a few times. Why is Riker just... Riker isn't blinking. He didn't have to ask what you've done. You got called to the superintendent's office. A... Yeah, he was a troublemaker for sure. It is Admiral Brand. On screen. Oh. That's on brand of him. <laughs> oh, that's on brand of her. <laughs> for that joke, you gotta subscribe. Yes. I wanted to inform you personally. There's been an accident. Oh, is this the accident that the Bajoran lady caused? Or is this another one altogether? I almost pressed skip intro on just like a reflex. I would have I would have died if I had done that. He had second degree burns in the chest and multiple fractures of his right arm. This is Wesley? I think they'll have to use a bicarotene substitute. I should Seven. send his complete- Oh, she's like a mom. Oh, she is a mom. I know he's fine. I know he's fine. And guest starring Will Wheaton. I thought he was a main cast member up to this point. Do you know who it was? Yes, his name was Joshua Albert. This is the guy that the Bajoran lady kills. Beverly, Wesley's alive and he's well. She's so worried. Captain Satelk and I will be taking depositions from Nova Squadron at 1500 hours today. I'm sure that everyone in this room joins me in expressing my deepest sympathy. I feel like I recognize this guy. The cadet should know that even after a tragedy like this, there are still duties to perform and life continues. That's gonna be really hard on them though. I wonder if we'll see that Bajoran lady. I'm sure we'll be able to conduct the investigation but thank you for your offer. Hey, Wesley. Not bad. The arm's a little sore. Don't really like his haircut at the back. It's a little strange. I know you're just trying to be helpful, sir. Never mind. I thought he had like a bowl cut at the back, but it's just normal. Hi. Hi. He used to be one of the cadets. I just never lost anyone under my command before. It's tough. I mean, I've never lost anyone under my command either, so I don't don't know why I said that. I said that like I've, I've lost people. <laughs> of course. Wow, Wesley's being really private about this. Everything's gonna be all right. As long as we stick together. Do they know something or are they just really nervous about this? Like, what if they made a mistake and ended up killing their cadet friend? What, the guy killed the flower to read a book? That is unacceptable, man. Jean-Luc Picard, class of 27. I know that. What happened to your hair? Thought it looked better looking like an egg. With a reverse body lift and pinned him in the first 14 seconds of the match. Wait, I want to know about this. I don't think I ever told you how much I appreciate. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to tell. There's nothing to tell. Look, you know as well as I do, I would never have graduated if you... You made a mistake. Did he... man among us who hasn't been young enough to make one. Did he help Picard cheat or something? At the time, I thought you were a, a mean-spirited, vicious old man. I was. And still am. What you did with your life afterwards. Seems you did okay. That's thanks enough for me. That's what a lot of teachers and stuff say, right? Like, thanks enough for me is you doing okay in life. <sighs> you nervous? 
No. Ah, there she is. Yes. There she is. Makes me sad to see her though because of her face. Oh, that was so sad. No one could have asked for a better team or better friends. Let's go. Wow, he really meant that too. And began a Z plus 25 degree climb in preparation for a Jaeger loop. Approximately nine seconds later. Oh God. Is that all to the story though? There must be something missing. Round Titan was at least 2,000 kilometers closer to the moon than indicated in your plan. Oh, interesting. Safety parameters, sir. That was not my question, Cadet. Yeah, why were you off? I didn't consider it significant enough to mention here. I apologize for the confusion, sir. I should have been more precise. I think you should mention any changes. Did any of you see the collision take place? No, sir. Cadet Cito. Yeah. Position, therefore you should have seen any sign of trouble from Cadet Albert. Yeah, she should have seen everything. A pilot relies on visual clues from the other ships to maintain formation. If you were flying on sensors of- This is so cool. You were flying a ship, traveling 80,000 kph. Kilometers per hour, 80,000? Josh was a good pilot, but lately he'd been having difficulties. He'd get nervous during close flight. I don't know. Do you blame Josh for this, though? You're blaming him. I was wrong. Then you are saying that the accident was Cadet Albert's fault. Yeah, you're blaming the dead man. And tried to pull out of the turn prematurely. And then crashed into Cadet Hajar. His dad is not going to like this. You allowed your teammate to fly when you knew he was having difficulties maintaining formation. Yeah, it is on your fault. We should have the first data from Mr. Crusher's flight recorder tonight. We will reconvene at 1300 hours tomorrow. That court session did not go very well for the cadets. The dad is in disbelief. You know, I love watching this episode after Lower Decks actually because it feels like a prequel. Well, I mean, it is a prequel in a way, but like, I don't know, it's cool. I find it cool watching it after Lower Decks. I don't mind that I'm watching it after. I've spoken with Admiral Brand, and she's agreed to allow us access to all of the physical evidence and testimony. Oh, well, that's good. Josh wasn't responsible for what happened. I had to do something. You said that we weren't going to have to lie to them. Yes, yeah, so that was a lie. That was a lie. I worked to get him on this team, but the truth is he panicked. We don't know that. Of course we do. Thanks, Wesley. You're standing up for him. He must have pulled away too soon. I think he got scared. That's not it. That's not it. You're just telling yourself this to try and stop blaming yourself. Oh, Cedo man, don't say that. You don't have to lie. Just don't volunteer any new information. So lie to them. The first night I met you, Wes. Cedo changed so much from this episode to Lower Decks. Josh can't be a part of those plans anymore. But I think he would still want us to be a team. You would, just don't lie to him. Don't just lie about him. If I was Josh right now, I'd be swearing at them. I'd be like, why are you putting the blame on me, chumps? You know what I mean? Like, you're not really my friends if you're doing this. I found this in Josh's room. I think it belongs to you. A ski trip. Josh and I went to Calgary last month. Calgary, Canada, Canada. Josh had a weakness, it was mathematics. No, he could do it. He just didn't like to. His mother and I thought he'd never get out of calculus. Bro, I could never get out of calculus. That is hard stuff. I realize it was his fault. And everybody could have been killed. It wasn't his fault. I want to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wesley, look what you're making this man do. Look how you're making him remember his child. I like the flag at half mask in the back. Mask? Mast at the background. We've just received the signal to begin the diamond slot formation. That's Cadet Locarno coming into view now. Wait, this is cool. And the next thing I remember is finding myself on the emergency evac station on Mimas with the rest of the squadron, except Josh. He's gonna tell the truth, right? He's gonna look at the father and not be able to lie to him. Somebody? No, sir. Oh, come on, Wesley. Yes, sir. I want you to be absolutely clear on this point, Mr. Crusher. Did you stay in formation? Was Nova Squadron in a diamond slot formation? No. No, they weren't. Hands. Oh. 
Oh, that is no diamond right there. I know my shapes and that is not a diamond. Mr. Crusher, are these ships in a diamond slot for me? <laughs> no, they are not. I have none, sir. Just tell the truth, man. Just tell the truth. It doesn't matter if you're going to get disbanded from Star Trek forever. <laughs> Just tell the truth. Well, there must be some explanation for this. I know you're telling the truth, but the satellite data made it look as if you were lying. No, he's lying. You can't do that. I'm not going to let them ruin your career, Wesley. You haven't done anything wrong. Well, don't try to protect me. Wesley's about to crush your dreams. Not going well, is it? No, it isn't. You remember the Paris Squares Tournament of 24? No, I don't. To the other cadets, the members of that team are gods. And that's a hard image to live up to. Yeah, that is. Nick is what makes that team special. He's their coach, surrogate father, and best friend. All surrogate father, that's good. We did find that Wesley opened his coolant interlock just before beginning the maneuver around Titan. This could be something. But there's no evidence that Wesley was performing that sort of a check. So why? But that can only be performed in a maintenance bay. Is there any other reason for opening the- What if they were trying to refuel while flying? ...the hazardous while the ship was in flight. Yeah, the engine would probably ignite the plasma. This is exactly what happened. This is exactly what happened. Exactly! Thanks, Picard. It's kind of a sick maneuver. ...and difficult demonstrations in precision flying. And it hasn't been performed at the Academy for over a hundred years. Do you know why? Because it was outlawed. Convince the four of you to learn the Colvard Starburst for the commencement demonstration. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. And Lacano would graduate as a living legend. He would probably get reprimanded for doing it anyways. Cadet, I asked you a question. Am I correct? I choose not to answer, sir. That means yes. If someone says I choose not to answer, that means yes. During the loop, your team attempted a maneuver. That was the direct cause of the crash. Yeah, it wasn't the guy's fault. Do you remember the first day you came aboard this ship? Your mother brought you on the bridge. Yes, sir. You even sat in my chair. Yeah, I remember. I think I watched that. That's the first episode, right? I was convinced you could be an outstanding officer, and I never questioned that conviction. Until now. Until now? I... I'm gonna make this simple for you, Mr. Crusher. Either you come forward and tell Admiral Brand what really took place, or I will. Wow. Oh, wow. Again, whenever Picard raises his voice, it's like music to my ears. He said he figured it out. Does he have any evidence? No, but he knew exactly how it happened. Which means he must have some evidence. So let him tell the inquiry what he thinks happened. They'll ask us, is it true? We'll say no, sir. There's no evidence, so there's no case. We'll get off with a reprimand. You suck. You suck. It's wrong, Nick. Wesley. No. I'm gonna tell them what happened. Yes, thank you, Wesley. Nick's about to punch you in the face, though. You can't live with this. You have to tell them what happened. Who the hell are you? Nick! You're gonna turn us in! No, wait a minute. Nick. No, you wait a minute! Nick is a horrible person right now. His ego is so big. Picard told you some big story about duty and honor. Yeah, but it's true. Well, it must have been a pretty good speech to make you turn your back on your friends. Oh. Oh, what? Oh, I wanna punch him. Don't make us pay for your guilty conscience. You'd let me do that? You'd let me throw away my career just to save your neck? Yeah, it's the same thing. And if I were in your place, I'd do it without hesitation. But that's me. You little manipulative man. Even though Wesley is smaller than you, you're still a little man. If no further evidence is presented, I have no choice but to close this investigation. Oh man, Picard's about to stand up. Or Wesley, come on Wesley. This inquiry is closed. No. Sir? Oh my god, yes. Wesley, Wesley, Wesley. We thought we could do it. We thought we could do anything. We were wrong. This hurts me for him to say. Josh didn't let us down, sir. It wasn't his fault. We let Josh down. No, sir. You deserve this. Buddy, they, they all deserve the punishment that they get, to be honest with you. They should have expelled all of us. They very nearly did. Mr. Lacano made an impassioned plea for the rest of you. Oh, that's good. Convince you to attempt the call board maneuver, and then to cover up the truth. Wow, he still has their backs. He did exactly what he said he would. 
He protected the team. I feel awful. Yeah, I would feel awful too. You knew what you had to do. I just made sure that you listened to yourself. Yeah, I like that they showed Wesley really at odds with everything throughout the episode as well. That was a good episode. That was a nice prequel to Lower Decks. And that was my reaction to The First Duty, episode 19 of season 5 of Star Trek The Next Generation. And that was a really nice episode. It was really nice watching that after Lower Decks, actually. I mean, it would have been cool watching this before Lower Decks, because then when I watched Lower Decks, I would have connected the two and been like, whoa, I've seen that episode before. Oh my god, it's this Bajoran lady, Cedo. Oh my god, this. Oh my god, that. But... I actually really enjoyed watching it after Lower Decks, which was really interesting. It kind of gave me like, you know when you watch Star Wars and you watch episodes 4, 5, and 6 first, and then you watch episodes 1, 2, and 3, and you get context of the universe and context of the past going into 4, 5, and 6. That's what I felt like with the first duty where I didn't, it wasn't necessary for me to watch it before Lower Decks. And Lower Decks is perfectly fine without me watching this episode, just like Star Wars episode four, five, episodes 4, 5, and 6. But watching this episode gives nice context, gives nice background and history to that episode. So I thought it was actually really fun watching this episode after watching Lower Decks. Again, this was a Wesley episode. I thought it was gonna like Cedo was gonna be like more of a major influence in this episode, but she was kind of a background character of that group more so than anything else. And when I was watching Lower Decks, I thought that she was the one that caused the accident. Like she was kind of the reason why, but it was all of them, especially the leader, but kind of all of them pressuring one person to do it. So I thought that was really interesting. It kind of subverted my expectations on that because again, I thought Cedo would be more of a major player or at least the one most majorly at fault with the accident so when she wasn't i was like oh this is interesting okay she just kind of was with everyone else she was kind of on the same page as everyone else but i enjoyed wesley in this episode he wasn't part of the enterprise anymore so i thought it was interesting because it's a guest starring and then the actor's name for wesley crusher so i thought it was I was just kind of like confused because I know eventually he leaves the show to pursue a film career. He Did he leave before this episode? Did he, did he leave before season five or during season five? And then he just decided to come back for like another episode or something like that. A little confused by why it said guest starring because usually that's only reserved for people who aren't really in the show that much or maybe only appearing in this one episode as a major character in the episode type deal. So that was a little confusing to me but also something that I'm sure you guys can just tell me straight away. But it was really nice seeing Wesley. Of course I missed him because it's cool seeing him. When he talked about when he first went on the Enterprise I was like thinking back to however long like eight months ago when I watched Encounter at Far Farpoint and I was like oh yeah I remember that moment. I actually do remember that moment. That was really cool. He has grown a lot. And I don't know, he was just kind of like a fun character in this one. It wasn't really a fun episode. It was a pretty heavy episode overall. But I really liked that when they were portraying Wesley, they weren't portraying him as actively attempting to hide the lies. Like, of course he lied until the very end of the episode. Don't get me wrong, he did that and that was a mistake and he should be punished for that. Like, yes, blah, 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 blah. But when they are talking about the lie, when they are talking about the deception that they are trying to do, like the group members together and stuff, Wesley is always the one who is the most reserved. He is always the one who has the most issue with everything they are doing. And I really like that because it still showed that he had a very big strength of character, but it also showed that he respected his friends at the same time, his friend's opinion. And so he was kind of at this stage where he was on the fence between siding with his friends and hiding all of this information and siding with his conscious con conscious consciousness and telling the truth about the situation and it was a little despicable when they were blaming the guy who died like that J josh i think his name was that was a little despicable when the dad came up and was like i'm sorry for my son's actions and stuff like that i probably would have just told him right there because that's horrible. Like making a father think of his son in that regard and making his father apologize for his son's actions, which weren't even his son's fault in the first place. 
is it's a little despicable don't get me wrong but again you can understand why wesley is lying it's not just for his own ego it's not just for his own self-preservation like he wants to tell people but he doesn't want to betray his friends and he has to figure out the line and the boundary between the two it'd be interesting to know if wesley ever becomes friends with any of these people in the future again like Cedo, the bajoran woman she definitely changes between this episode and the lower deck so it'd be interesting to see if they ever met up at some point like i think they would definitely get along with each other at season seven Cedo would get along with wesley like i think she would forgive him for telling the truth and stuff like that so i just think that would be really interesting and picard in this episode was also really cool and he was yelling at wesley that was just awesome it's like little goosebumps you know whenever picard yells i just, just eat it up i just eat it up it's so good and again he was so good in this just eating up the scenery with his yelling about honor and duty and stuff like that it was super super cool and yeah overall i really enjoyed this episode it was a really fun episode oh yeah and let me tell you guys about star trek in the future so i said that this is going to be my last two episodes of star trek and then you know i'm going on my trip so i'm not going to be able to record but i pre-recorded a bunch of stuff this is pre-recorded so this will be out while i'm already in dubai on my trip but this was going to be the last week of recordings that I was going to do before there was going to be a break. So there was probably going to be like a week break where there were going to be no videos on the channel. But in my head, I was like, what is, is there a way that I can do three videos for the channel and have them appear on the channel, but not have them be movies because that will take too long to edit. And then I thought, why don't I just do one episode of Star Trek TNG on Monday, one episode on Wednesday, and one episode on Friday. So I was thinking that next Monday I'm going to be watching Future Imperfect followed by Time's Arrow Part 1 on Wednesday and then Time's Arrow Part 2 on the Friday and that will completely finish my run of TNG before we hop into DS9. I was going to say let me know what you think but you're not going to let me know what I'm thinking because I'm pre-recording this really far in advance like three two weeks three weeks in advance so you're not gonna I've already I by the time you see this video I've already recorded those episodes and watched those episodes but yeah next week keep an eye out because Monday Wednesday Friday there will be TNG for all those days so that will be really exciting anyways thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful beautiful amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel it really does mean a lot and yeah i'm really excited for those three episodes obviously one a day but really excited for those three episodes because i don't know they just seem like really fun episodes i've been loving tng it'll be really sad when it's over but i'm glad that I always thought this was going to be my last day, but I'm glad that I have another week of TNG to go because I just love it. I just love this show. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time for my next Star Trek The Next Generation reaction.